Hello again. This is uh, the every other Thursday uh, training videos. I'm Christopher Brannon with the Coeur d'Alene Public Library and the Cooperative Information Network. And I'm George Williams. I am the next search catalog coordinator at Northeast Kansas Library System. And today we're going to talk about something that we talked about in little tiny bits and pieces in a couple of other places. Um, but uh, it's going to be about how to use one report to run a different report, um, which I do a little bit of. Uh, and we talked about it in the, the first year that we did this. And you can find Koha US at koha-us.org. And you can find all our videos on the Learn page. You can just click on Learn, and it's uh, we've got some new organization here now. Um, we've uh, made the page a little smaller. Uh, but if you go to Video Playlists, the most recent video will be right on top, but you can see all the videos from all the past videos uh, lay, laid out right there under season one and season two. And uh, this actually, I've tracked down which videos we're going to expand on. So season one, episode five, um, I talked about how to add links to your reports. And then in, season, and then in uh, episode 12, in the dashboard uh, finale, we used the, some, uh, a big massive report that I have that you scan a barcode and it gives you access to a whole bunch of different reports and different, uh, answers a bunch of different questions about one single item, whether it's deleted or not, you know, it, it just opens the door to a whole bunch of different stuff. And one of the things it does is when you're in that report, you can click on a link and it'll run another report. <clears throat> and we went over that so briefly that we thought we would talk about it again and go into some more detail. Yeah, I found that uh, that really handy. I actually implemented the, the, the dashboard over here and, and thought, you know, there's probably not enough people that realize uh, that you can uh, start a report from based off of a report that you're in. And I yeah. think that's a really handy feature. Yeah. Um, the thing that I like about it is, you know, particularly for that dashboard report is, you know, the whole idea was I wanted a way to just scan a barcode and have information, make it really easy to find out information about that item. And because before I used to have, a lot of the questions that I use that dashboard report to answer questions about uh, is, is it in transit? You know, how many times is it checked out? What's the history? What do the log files say about this item? And so you have to run like five different things usually to figure out what you need. And I wanted to be able to just scan the barcode and then click, 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 and not have to run other reports. Uh, and, and that's, you know, how the, what I'm going to show you today is how to use uh, one report that's just a simple item count by item type to run a report that goes into more detail about what things are using that item type. Right. And normally uh, the Koha community wiki is at wiki.koha-community.org. And I put, a, I put some of the SQL I write, some of the reports I write are on the reports library there at the wiki. Uh, the two reports I'm going to look at today, uh, I don't think I have either of them there because they use um, some non-standard authorized values. And that's another thing we've talked about before. Uh, non-standard authorized values was report or a video number. Uh, oh, that one I'm not going to be able to. I, I know I wrote it down here somewhere in my notes. Was it? one of the ones behind the, the dashboard finale? No, there was a different one. It was season okay. one, episode 24. Okay. It was the last episode of the first season, right before we took that little break at, over the holidays. Okay. Um, and I specifically talked in that one about how to use, how I create different authorized values for doing different stuff. And I've never, we've never talked about my shelf list report yeah, we talked about it really, really briefly, 
um, because it's full. There isn't a single, there isn't one single standard uh, authorized value link in that. It's and it's got like you know, it uses like eight authorized values. None of them are normal ones. So, but let me just uh, show you what this does. So uh, first, I'm going to run the report that just does the item count. And uh, this is a report that I wrote for my libraries so that any, any library can run this. And I give them a choice. I, I tell them that they should run it. You know, let's run it for a smaller library. Let's run it for McLeod. You pick uh, a library. And then you can also pick a specific authorized values or item type. Um, I'm just going to choose all and run the report. And so this will give us a list of all the item types and how many uh, of each of those item types, how many items of those item types are owned by McLeod. So they have one audiobook new is the item type. They have one of those. Um, okay. They have 3,002 books. They have 87 new books. They have 13 kits and so on. Um, so one of the reasons I wrote this is we had one library that was asking the question, you know, I have something that's showing up as a, uh, as a piece of artwork. Um, I don't have any artwork, so what is that? Well, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make it so that you could say, you know, I've got one book that's listed. I've got one thing that's listed as audiobook new, and then this button over here runs my shelf list report. It, it runs it from a cloud and it says, show me all the things that have an item type that says audiobook new. Okay. And so I'm using this button here to run this report over here. Now, like I said, this report over here um, has a mountain of variables when you run it. Mm -hmm. So if, if I wanted to run that report uh, for McLeod audiobooks, I would have to open that report, click on McLeod, um, find audiobook new, but then I can also say, you know, um, just show me the ones that are adult. I can limit it by shelving location. I can limit it by collection code. Um, I can uh, do a left anchored call number search or a call number limit. Um, I can show just the things that have a not for loan status. I can choose the item added between these two dates, last borrowed between these two dates, last seen between these two dates with X or fewer checkouts. Show me the checked out items, yes or no. Um, show me uh, lost, missing, and withdrawn items, yes or no. Um, with X or more copies at this library, with X or more copies in the catalog. So it's it's got a lot of variables in there. Wow. Um, but if I run this report up here at the top, once it runs, I've got a URL here. Okay. And so let me share a different screen. Or actually, I think I should be able to just pull this window into this screen. Can you see an Atom window there now? Yes. So this is actually that URL just minus the base. Um, and every place in here you notice this uh, and parameter name. Uh, I'm just going to replace all of those. So each one of these is one of those parameters in that URL. So here we've got the library. Um, here we've got the um, permanent shelving location which this uh, percent symbol 25, that's the ASCII uh, code for an ampersand. And I've got this parameter here as the item types, which is the item type code for that item type. And so each one of these is a different parameter. Okay. And so that's what the, um, that's what this, uh, report is this first report is doing is you know we've got select branch name uh, 
uh, different the different counts, and then we're concatenating that um, all of the data here into a URL, which we've shown people how to do before. This one I'm giving it a class uh, for a button. Okay. And uh, I've got the this is the part that runs the report. It's saying uh, when I click on that button. It's going to run guided report, report number 2731, run this report. And here it's got the parameter name for the item home library. But it's not putting in that, that parameter isn't hard coded. What it's doing is it's saying, give me the branch code that matches the branch code for that line in the report. Right. And then down here where I've got the parameter for the item type, it's saying, show me the item, give me the parameter for that line in the report. What's the item type that that line is reporting on? And it's going to plug the item type code in there. It's very dynamic. Yeah, and this way, uh, you know, that when I, uh, I don't want to update it, I just want to run it. So whichever library, that was McLeod that we ran this on, we run it again there. So it's concatenating all of those different parts of the URL into one string, and it's filling in. Uh, it's filling in the the branch code based on what's over here, and the item type based on what's over here. So when I click that, I don't have to go to report number twenty seven thirty one, and choose all of those different parameters. It's just filling them in, as if I had already done all that. Okay. And so that's pretty much it. It's it's pretty easy to do. The hard part is you've got to be sure to know, like you have to use the report number. So I have to know that this is report number 2731. And that report has to exist. Yeah, the report has to exist. So if you wanted to take this to your system, uh, I'm going to put on the web page that I'm creating for this episode, I've got the the SQL for that report, for the first report here. Um, and the part that you're going to have to fill in is you're going to have to create the report that runs based on that report. And I've got the, the SQL for that too. The one thing I would say about the SQL for the shelf list is that you're going to have to tinker with it to make the, uh, the item types work and, and the collection codes work because they are using authorized values that aren't standard. But uh, but once you have a report that runs, you can take the you can take the URL from that report, and uh, and build that link, because that link works every time you go to that link, the the link is going to is going to run the report the same way you ran it before. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Very handy. Yeah, I've got, and you know, like the item dashboard report, it runs like six different reports, uh, something like that. Uh, some not as complicated as this one, so. Yeah. Well, that's, that's great. You know, um, yeah, I mean, if you have a report that has all the pieces that you need uh, for another report, or if you can modify that report to include that those pieces of information so that you can kind of drill down so like if you get you have a report that gives you some generic information and you want to see more details about that one specific yeah piece that that is a, a very handy tool to to have on hand uh just as long as you uh keep track of your reports and and make sure that those reports uh still exist when you when you point to them yeah that um that's proved important. to be an issue uh in the past when I worked at a library where many people had the ability to create reports. Here at Next Search Catalog, many people have the ability to write reports, but I'm the only one that does it. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, George, thank you very much for sharing that. And I hope that uh, uh, folks will find that helpful and handy. Um, just a reminder to everybody, uh, 
we we enjoy getting uh, feedback on our videos. And if you have a, a, a particular topic that you would like us to cover, feel free to comment uh, on our YouTube channel. Uh, our website, the Koha US website, lists all of our our uh, videos. But if you go to uh, the YouTube channel and search for Koha US, you'll find our all of our playlists, including this one. And uh, uh, you can subscribe and like our videos. We like to see those likes to find out um, what uh, piques your interest and what you find helpful. Uh, but you can subscribe so that you can stay up to date with uh, all of our videos. Uh, if you don't wanna have to keep coming back to the, the website to uh, see if there's something new. Um, but make sure you do that. And with that, we'll see you again in two weeks. See you later.